Hi, I'm Jörg. In today's episode, I'm building a minimum lubrication system for my CNC router. And I hope to take you along. So here I have laid out the components for you. And honestly, it took me longer to find the fittings than to find the rest of the components. Um, I have here the eBay Fogbuster knockoff. Um, and it came with two needle valves, a four millimeter and an eight millimeter pneumatic hookups. So the four millimeter is for the fluid, the eight millimeter for the air. Now, <clears throat> there's something I didn't know, and that is there is another hose actually that goes all the way to the tip. And the tip here I have modified because you have the Venturi effect where the air comes out and it sucks the fluid in, and that doesn't work very well. All of the online reviews that I read is uh, that is the main complaint. Um, and sure enough, when you adjust the air just a tiny bit, the Venturi effect will change, and then the under pressure right here will be different. No matter how you set that, uh, it's just going to be a different pressure setting, and the amount of fluid coming through will be different. So to get around, I cut this off. There's a tip on here that I cut off, and then there's a tip on here. I cut that off as well. Can you see that? Um, so, very easy uh, Dremel and uh, just a little bit clean up on the burr, all done. And next is that we have a set of eight millimeter hose. This is a polyurethane hose, very nice and flexible. It's from Amazon, it came with some fittings as well. Four millimeter hose and uh, regulator, water separator and filter element all in one. This came off a Harbor Freight compressor that is an airbrush compressor and I added a shutoff valve, a hookup for the compressor and here are the fittings to fit into the canister that I'm using and I needed a three quarter inch uh, NPT thread for that. Now I can tell you I had the main difficulty was to find all the fittings to put this together and lucky enough I got all of that out of my plumbing box for the house. Um, so here is the container itself. This is from Filtreat and I had this on hand. Initially I wanted to filter the uh, coolant for my lathe and that's why I bought it and I never installed it, I never used it. So. This is the container that we're going to fill later on with the lubricant. And somehow uh, the in and out is not important anymore. And somehow we need to get the liquid out of this. So air in in one side and then air out on the other side. And then we have to get the liquid. This is a pressurized container now. And the eBay deal came with, so the Fogbuster knockoff came with a filter element and a four millimeter hose. And I have attached that to a top fitting that used to be here. That's a push button. So I took the push button out and I installed what is called a bunk fitting. So it's a through, through hole uh, fitting that uh, installs on either side and it has a little bit of a tubing hookup. Um, this came out of the RC supply, so RC model airplane supply. Um, I had that on hand. Uh, alternatively, what you can do, what I suggest, is that you take one of the smaller fittings out of here and drill a hole where you got like a beefy section right here. Drill a hole right here and then install two of those fittings, one on the top, one on the bottom, and then you can have a pickup tube right in the container itself. The material that I have on hand as a lubricant is actually made by Metalworking Fluids Trimsol. It's a general purpose emulsion. I use this on my lace and I hope that I can stay with that. So we'll see how that works. Um, I have used it beforehand, uh, lubricating by hand for aluminum and it's doing a, a good job um, preventing the chip weld. Okay. We've got this now. Let me put the elements together and then uh, we're going to have another look. So the way this is going to work is, of course, we have this here on one side. 
push the air in and the shutter valve. And then this is gonna get screwed into here. And I just realized that I don't think that hose can get squeezed on there. Let's take this off over there. No way. That is just not gonna fly. Okay, so plan B. Um, this came with several different fittings here. That is probably not an NPT. That is just a PT, just pipe thread. And when I eyeball that, then I probably can drill this out and put this in. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and try that. We'll, we'll see how that works. Okay, I was able to drill this piece out and we have now a push to connect fitting. I like that much better. That also looks better. So this is gonna go into this side. Is that right? Uh, yeah, the outside is not gonna be the air in now, but that, like I said before, does not matter at all. Then we have the air regulator hook up on this side. There we go. And yeah, you need to put about half a mile of Teflon tape on here. Um, that should be fine. That should be fine. Good. Don't over tighten it, it's just plastic. So, okay, um, on off, maybe like this, you can see the gauge regulating here. I also put a piece of tubing on here and this little gizmo is um, a one-way valve, so it prevents the liquid from flowing back. I don't think it's so important in our setup now because the container is gonna be pressurized. Um, so this is gonna look like this and push to connect right here. This then hooks up to the eight millimeter here. And then the, the four millimeter goes on here and connects to this. So let's install it onto the machine. So I went ahead and I put two M4 holes right here into the main plate of the Z axis. And then we are going to screw this on here like so. There's two screws and I think that that will take this guy off for a sec here. You can see. Um, so that is here. Then the hoses can route up. This can live right here. I think that, I think that'll work. I think that'll work. So here we go. One, two. And that one goes in, that one goes in, tighten that down, straight, look nice. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to fasten the container to the side of the machine and route the hose. So I have now managed to route the hoses from the mist system right here with the coolant and the spindle wire to the back of the X axis and then down I don't have those hoses actually, not the coolant hoses and also not these hoses, the pneumatic hoses in the, in the wire track. They're running besides the wire track. And the only reason for it is actually that the wire track is not big enough. Okay, let's set up for a test cut. Here I have a piece of aluminum fastened down to my spoil board. 
and I already set the x and y. We will just have to set z uh, to zero. And let's do that pretty quick. That's actually enough for this test. We don't have any accuracy that we need within Z, so we are off like uh, one tenth of a millimeter right now, and it's fine. So I'm gonna reset Z right here to the heights of that blue block that you see there, the heights gauge, and that is 50.8. So I set that in the software. The cutter that you just saw was a four millimeter O flute cutter. And what I'm intending to do is we're gonna cut an M8 hole and the M8 core diameter is 6.8 millimeters. So we're going with a four millimeter cutter in a 6.8 millimeter hole. I'm gonna clear out a portion of the top first then go further down and um, by the end of the Day, we're gonna cut through this three-quarter inch 19 millimeter so if the fuck bust a knockoff here can manage that we don't break that tool because going into a pocket that deep um, the cutter always loves to gum up with aluminum and then just break off so let's see if we can manage that that does not happen and first I need to set the amount of coolant coming out of here so let's do that now next Okay, let's see if we can just maneuver that close to the tool. I see already that's not so simple, right there. Well, probably all you see right now is my hand. And let's turn the air on. Oh yeah, later on the air compressor is probably gonna come on. You will not be able to hear me. Okay, it's one and a half bar. We have no liquid coming that I see, so I'm going to open up the liquid a little bit on the needle valve. Well, there it goes. That was too much. I think that ought to do it right there. Okay, I'm going to clean that up one more time. Okay, so the RPM is going to be 12,000. So we'll, we'll see how that does. I think that's so far good. I'm not sure if you can hear me. There's a spring pass right there. Um, that's why we're cutting this geometry twice. Now it gets interesting, we're getting deeper into that pocket.
And here is the spring pass. Okay, that wasn't all bad. Now, you probably also caught that towards the end of the cut, the nozzle just simply didn't reach down in the hole anymore. There was no air going in, no lubricant going in, and no chips coming out. The cutter didn't break off, which is a good thing. And the plate that we machined is 6061 aluminum. Uh, it's okay to machine. It leaves usually a good surface finish. And um, the silicon content is, I think the minimum silicon content is 0.4% or so. 0.6 and above is really good to machine, um, but 6061 machines okay. Now, the dimensions of the hole right here are perfect. They are exactly the way I need them, which is good. Um, I love to have you coming along for the next project as I'm replacing the MDF board with a fixture plate and a whole bunch of M8 holes. That's what I was doing right here. That was a test cut for that. Okay, I'll catch you next time.